Bruno in New York, uh, he was he was one of the best. And not because, but he was uh, the, the people after a little bit when they met him and he started to wrestle. I mean, they were falling all the time because he was a good personality and a good. He was like not normal man because he looked like a bull when when he weighed two seventy five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if you see if you see Bruno, you pass outside, you look twice. I said, "Oh my God, look at this guy!" Uh, but he was, and I I'm going to tell you something. When when he beat Buddy Roger, okay, in New York for the belt. The people in New York, at the old garden, not to the new one, not to the old garden, mm-hmm. they get up and they stand up for almost 15, 20 minutes. We never sit. Because, well, uh, uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Dominic, that, you know, you, you told me stories before, and, and as did Bruno, uh, was that because, you know, you had mentioned and talked a little bit to me, uh, well, a lot to me, and, and Bruno had a little bit, about the discrimination that Italians faced, uh, especially in big cities like New York and Pittsburgh and other places, and the Italian immigrants that had come here from the old country, yes. suddenly they're able to turn on their television and see an Italian superstar speaking the language to them, uh, what did that mean to the Italian immigrants in places like New York and Pittsburgh and Washington and Cleveland and Buffalo? What did Bruno San Martino and guys like you and, and Rocca and all the other Italian stars that came into wrestling at that time, what did, they, what did Bruno San Martino mean to the, to the Italian immigrants? Well, I think it mean, mean a lot because uh, the television, when you watch, you know, at that time, you know, when I come in, now I'm just jumping the track. When I come in in, in Canada from Italy, I saw the television that I never see a television in the, in, in the home. We didn't have it. We have a bunch of donkey and, 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 uh, and <laughs> sheep in, in, the, in the farm. You know? <laughs> but when I came in in Montreal, I saw that the, the TV was run like a moon, a small one. I never saw TV before. The people... And that moment, and, and now I'm talking for me, and, and in Canada, I came in in Montreal, the French people, no, they didn't like the Italian coming in. Mm-hmm. And that was a fact. And, and I know it's not nice, but then when you know the people, when you start l- learning the language, it's a little different. If right. Bruno was the same thing, the only thing Bruno came in in Pennsylvania and he did the school. He did go to the college. He wasn't an, an, uh, he go in a soldier for ten months or, or almost a year. Um, and you, 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 when you learn the language, there's all the difference. Do you always find somebody, you know, accept the people come from overseas? And I don't mean just Italy. If other place too. Sure. Because today. Uh, today is a different things. You can uh, you can go because I've been in Africa, I've been in the Middle East, I've mm-hmm. been in the Philippines. You know, and uh, if you speak the language, you're okay. And uh, at that moment, I was I was very good because I speak French and I speak a little bit Thai and I can speak a little bit English <laughs> and a little I can defend myself from Chinese, <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> So, but anyway, well, but well, was it at that time? Yeah, at that time, Dominic, was it for the Italian immigrants to, after facing that discrimination, uh, to see on television and to go be able to see live and read about in the magazines and in the newspaper, to see somebody like a Bruno San Martino, somebody from the old country, becoming a world champion in America, uh, that must have meant the world to those Italian immigrants. Well, and that's what meant meant to the people living in America too. Not just not sure, just oh the, sure, not <clears throat> just the immigrants, not just the people who come from Italy. Of course, the people who come from Italy or another part, yes, they probably respect more because they say, "Look at this guy who come from Italy." But then, the people in the United States and other people, you you like that wrestler, and you follow him. 
And right. because he was so so strong and everything in New York, you know, he was the best. There's no man in the world so far, and probably I never see him. No, no one can be like him in New York, because he draw people in New York. I mean, unbelievable, so loud all the time. And yeah. he was, he was from Italy. So, so what? What's the difference? <laughs> you know. Well, I think for like the Americans, for me especially. Even as a young kid watching Bruno in Pittsburgh, uh, oh, yeah. you could you could see his sincerity. I've never seen somebody be able to translate their sincerity through the television camera as well as Bruno could. He didn't have to say it. You could just tell by looking at him that when he said yes. he loved Pittsburgh, you could tell he yes. was being sincere. Uh, when yes. he said he loved the fans, he was being sincere. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because if you think... The fan, they watch you on the television. I'd say it's in the Pittsburgh, on Channel 11, when I came in here. I mean, the people, they, they sell out to go in the studio. But when you go to the arena, you sell out. Of course, I'm not yeah. saying just me. It was Bruno and other people better than me. But the people, if you, you want to go see the wrestling, I go see the hockey before when I started. I don't care what it was. You think the worry about it, where you come from? You you pay for the seat and you sit there. You enjoy the work with hockey and other things. Right. And Bruno San Martin was that way with the wrestling. He was one of the best. That's all you know. So it's very hard to to say everything what he did because he got hurt a few times. Uh, Bruno San Martin broke his neck in New York. Uh, we'll talk about that, Dominic, about how, why did he not go to the hospital in New York? Well, um, it was Vince McMahon and myself who was watching the, the, the red when he was wrestled, when he hurt himself. And um, mm-hmm. when that thing happened, I said to Vince McMahon, I said, Bruno's hurt. And that's what I'm telling you is a fact. I was there, and I said that, and I see it. I, and Vince McMahon took off like a shotgun to go to the arena, and he, they stopped, and the, the referee and then the other people came in and blah, blah. But he stayed down there. He couldn't get up. He was right in the middle of the ring. Uh, and I watched him because it was on the summertime, and they were sweating. And I mm-hmm. still believe today the guy didn't do that on purpose. He just lost the weight because he was heavy. He just slid down and fell on his head. Yeah. But uh, Vince McMahon and the doctor there, then there was the doctors, and they said, you have to go to the hospital. And Bruno said, no, I'm not going to the hospital. Now uh, we left to go to the hotel. And that, and I said to Bruno, I said, why you didn't want to go to the hospital here in New York? He said, Dominic, he said, if I go to the hospital, my mom is going to die tomorrow. Mm. See, that's what, he, that's what he said. He said, if I, if I stay here in New York and they find out I'm in the hospital, my mom is going to die. Well, he was so worried. He was so worried about his mother and father finding out from the media that yes, yes, he had been yes. hurt. Yeah, and and uh, all night to six o'clock in the morning, we put our eyes on. I put our eyes on his neck, you know, on on, on the back everywhere. And then, uh, at six o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> I said, "Okay, now I'll, I'll take you to the airport." And he said, "No, you don't go to the airport." I said, "You didn't sleep. I didn't sleep." I take a taxi, but he called the doctor in Pittsburgh, Doctor Maroon, and Doctor Maroon picked him up at the airport straight to the hospital, you know, for the operation. Incredible! Uh, and, and and his neck, well, you know, you hear the phrase "broken neck." Uh, he had, correct me if I'm wrong, he had a crushed vertebra in his neck. Is that right? Yes, yes, yeah. Because so you know, I mean. You know, that, when he fell on his neck, this body, the weight, not just the yeah. neck broke, he screwed up his back too. You know? Yeah. yeah. 
And he had he had lifelong problems with his back after that, didn't he? Say that again. He had uh, throughout his life because of that he had problems. With oh his yes, back. yes, yes, yes. Everything he was is did have other things in his body besides that, you know. Mm. And that's what that's what they kill him, you know. So, well, what an incredible story, you know. We heard yesterday at the church, uh, Larry Richard, uh, local personality from KDKA, yeah. and 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 Dr. Costa, both gave very very, inc- I think, incredible speeches. Uh, talking about Bruno San Martino, and what I got from both of those men and everybody that spoke yesterday was just what a deep, unabiding love that Bruno San Martino had for his mother and father, and especially his mother. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. with what he had gone through as a child. Yes, yes, because when uh, the 1941 and 42 when the war was there, uh, where the Bruno was living. Because his father, the father who came in early here, he worked in the West Virginia in the mine, and then he moved to Pittsburgh. Uh, they have to be up in the mountain there uh, because of the, the German was coming in and they, you know, they put everybody out of the house and everything. And the mother mm. have to go have to go at night, go to her own house to pick up something to eat to take up the mountain. And and Bruno told me, I said when I see my mom, he was a kid, six years old. When mm. I see my mom leave, I sit outside and wait the one she come back.